So, Indigo Pork, a new mascot horror game that's been taking over the internet recently. And the best part about it, it's actually a good game. I love everything about it. The characters, the gameplay, and the environment. Just all of it. However, something occurred to me while playing the game. Man, this game would be so much more fun if it was multiplayer. Wait, hold on. That's a good idea. So, I'm setting out to make a multiplayer version of Indigo Pork. The thing is, I can't just take Indigo Pork's base game and modify it. I think that breaks a few laws. FBI, open up! Whoa, whoa, okay, okay, no, please don't do that. So I'm gonna have to make a fan game that's built from the ground up. Now, what is this game gonna be about? Well, in Indigo Pork's story, the pork is in shambles, like basically falling apart. And towards the end of the chapter, Ramily gets you to help him repair the pork, giving you the title of a rookie wrangler, which probably means staff. So, off of that concept, I came up with a simple outline. You play as a rookie wrangler, and you've been given a task. You need to help Ramily repair a certain area of the pork. But, there's a catch. A monster will be trying to hunt you down and stop you from progressing. Basically a weird combination of horror games. In the Go Pork, Dead by Daylight, and Slender Man. <laughs> now, we need to choose a location for repairs, and the monster that chases you. But we basically only have two options for the monsters. This bird called Molly, and this lion called Lloyd. Basically, we don't have much to work with, and since the first chapter is focused on Molly, we'll just be choosing her. And because we chose Molly, it only makes sense for the location to be Molly's landing pad. Now that's really convenient, because the environment of the area is much more simpler than literally every single area of the park, and I am bad at map design. Like, really, really bad. Oh. Now that we got our plan set up, let's get started. So the first thing we need to do is create a player model. Now, I'll be using Adobe Fuse. Some of you might know what this program is. And yes, they cancelled it, but it's still on Steam. So, I'll just be using that one. Now, in the original game, you play as an urban explorer. Now, from what consists of your player model, you are definitely not dressed appropriately from this occasion. Dude, you're going to an amusement park that's been abandoned for eight years. You're not going to the gym. I do have to give him props though, he is incredibly jacked. So I decided to make my character look more like an urban explorer. You know, wearing something that protects their body. Stuff like long sleeve shirts and long pants. So I got a bit carried away and made a criminal. <laughs> I then took this model and created a view model out of it, which means I just cut off everything except for his arms. Then I got some mixable animations and imported everything into Unreal Engine. Now, we need to start with our player controller. Since I want this game to be as similar as possible to Indigo Park, we're gonna borrow some of their concepts. First things first, we need that signature flashlight. This flashlight is basically your best friend. It's your only tool and it's really helpful. Wait, what? Discord? Oh yeah, we have a Discord now. That's right, if you're looking to hang out with some cool people, join the Discord server. You'll get exclusive updates on my projects, like this pretty cool online FPS game I'm developing. You can learn more about it in the description. And occasionally, we even host events. So, link in the description below. Uh, yeah, let's get back to the, <laughs> the flashlight. So I went to Sketchfab and found this flashlight model. I added it to the game and made a flashlight holding animation. Now his wrist looks a little broken. I do not know how to fix this. So we're just gonna keep it like that. Then I made some procedural walking animations. And yeah, this looks pretty solid. The original game also had this running mechanic, which I actually put it pretty easily to my game. And to explain it, it's basically shift go fast, but not shift go slow. I know, I'm so smart. Now, a feature that wasn't in the original game was crouching. Well, that was because you didn't need to. You were like four feet tall. Don't believe me? Look at this counter. Either that's a really big counter, or you're just really small. And since my robber here isn't four feet tall, I created a very simple crouching mechanic. I also got some third person animation stuff of Mixamo. He looks very strange, but we'll work with what we have. So, now we gotta go to the objective, which I decided to be flip five switches around the map. So I got this switch model off of a free acid pack I found, and realized this switch doesn't actually switch. Since it's a one port static mesh, and not a skeletal mesh, we can't move the switch. It's all one model. You know what that means. Blender! After a while, the switch can now actually switch. I then made an animation for the player and the switch, which for some reason caused a bit of problems. Did some fine tuning and coding, and yeah, we got our switches. I also made it so that when you hover over an object that's interactable, an outline appears. Just like in real life. There it is. I was looking for this. Uh, what? Now we got our basic systems in order, let's add the funny bird. So I looked for a model on Sketchfab, and good news, I found one. Bad news, it says it's stripped straight from the game. Which is probably another crime if I'm gonna release this game, so uh... I won't be releasing this game unless I get permission from the owner. Which I know it's sad, but it has to be done. I then did some boring animation stuff and got to making the AI. Now, this AI I made is actually pretty simple. She will roam around the map going from switch to switch, looking for players. Now, once she spots the player, she'll chase them until she loses sight of them, or until she kills them. Then she'll return back to roaming. 
It's really simple, but it gets the job done. Speaking of killing players, you can't, because I forgot to code it. But how this is gonna work is I wanted a revive system. Like, no matter what happened to you, a friend can come by and just revive you. It's not exactly realistic, but, you know, game. So I added a trigger box onto Molly. Whenever a player steps inside it, it plays this jump scare. Then it triggers the death event. This event will spawn a dead body and put you in a ghost-like state. Like Phasmophobia. Or dare I say it, Among- Now, for the dead body, I made it so that whenever players come up to it, you can interact with it. Doing this will play an animation, and at the end of it, it will revive the player. Now that all of our mechanics are done, it's time for designing the map. So Molly's landing pad mostly has these soft walls. So I made a material that would replicate these walls. It's just a bunch of colors with a normal map laid over it to make it look like plastic. I put together a little demo map to showcase this, and it looks pretty good. Now, since I'm literally insane, I decided to make the map procedurally generated. That means every time you play this game, the map changes every time. Now, I don't really know how to do this. The closest thing I've ever did was this Backrooms game that had infinite levels. However, this generation system was, uh, infinite. And Molly's landing pad is probably not infinite, because trapping children in infinite mazes is probably illegal. Anyhow, there's this thing called a wave function collapse algorithm. So, uh, let's search up what that is, because I don't know what that means. This link looks nice. 40 I cannot, for the life of me, figure this out. I don't know how to do this. Screw it, I'm coming up with my own system. So, I'm gonna make a lot of rooms, all with a different combination of passages. It will start off by spawning one room. The room will check the passageways to see if it's blocked or not. If it isn't, then it will spawn more rooms. Then we can just repeat that until a certain number is reached. And now we have a procedurally generated maze. But when the maze stops generating, it just leads into the void. And I wouldn't be able to fall into an endless void in real life. Yeah, I, I can't do that. Wait, why are we here? So I came up with a solution. At the end of each generation, it will check for any unfilled passageways. And once it does, it will just put this giant block just to block the passageways. Alright, a maze now abides by the laws of physics. But something's missing. Multiple layers. Now, in Molly's landing pad, there's a lot of verticality in it. There's a lot of stairs and a lot of slides that lead down and up. So I made two rooms to adjust for this. This room that leads up with a slope, and this room that leads up with a slide. Since my generation system is pretty customizable, I can just move this thing up here, and boom, we have a second layer. I'm sure this won't cause any generation problems. I then made it so that the switches and Molly can spawn in the maze. Now, this wouldn't be an indigo pork game if we didn't have Ramley the raccoon. He's kind of the main mascot of the pork. A lot of people like him. I personally like him too. It would just be a crime if I just didn't include him. And we've committed enough crimes in this freaking video. <laughs> now, for Ramley, I wanted him to act like a guidance. So before you begin, Ramley will give you all the information you need to know about how to defeat the game. So I set out with that plan in mind. Luckily, there is a fan model of this guy. So I don't have to keep stealing assets from the game. But there's a problem. The model can't open its mouth, and we need Ramley to talk, so we can't really just have him sit like this. So I decided to retexture him. Now, I'm not really known for my art skills, or anything at all, but I made this. Now we have two textures for Ramley, him with his mouth open, and him with his mouth closed. If you take one frame from each material, and just switch back and forth between them, it looks like he's talking. So then I made this TV model, and applied Ramley to the screen. Now, Ramley doesn't have a voice. I could ask the original voice actor, but like, just look at this game. <laughs> We're gonna be doing the Animal Crossing method. What is the Animal Crossing method? And yeah, our game is basically done. However, I wanna add one more thing. A camera. Not just a camera, a camera that can blind anything. Why? Well, because I wanted a way to stun Molly, cause she is a bit too fast. But, I also wanted a way to troll my friends. Because causing permanent eye damage to my friends is really funny. So, I looked on Sketchfab for a camera model and found this one. I imported it and animated it, and don't ask how he holds it. It's natural, trust me. Then I made this blinding effect, which is really nice. I love my eyes being burned. Did some code magic, and boom! You can now pick up a camera, use it, stun the monster, and also blind your friends in the process. I then made the UI, main menu, and settings menu. I took a little bit of inspiration from Indigo Work. Then, it was time for testing. See, so watch this. What? Hey, look over here, smile! <laughs> what? Oh. We're basically playing Slender the Eight Pages, guys. It's so loud! <laughs> It's so quiet. Oh, we're, we're gonna quiet. die. No. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Run, 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 run. Oh, oh he does! <laughs> okay, I think at least one person died. Okay. Hi. <laughs> He's dead. Nah. Alright, I'll, I'll help him. I'll help him. Alright, whoever this is, I'm helping. I'm helping, alright, I'm helping. Where the frick? I think there's someone inside of me. <laughs> okay. Oh my god, that jump scared me. Let's go, let's go. We are so gone. <laughs> Run. Oh my! Hello? Is it Hi. Okay. Ow! Deathless run! 
Oh, flash it! Flash it! Turn around, flash it! Okay, find, find the vents. There's no vents. We're stuck. Oh, we're going up here. Yeah, run, run, run in there and crouch. Where, where, where? Up ahead. Are you crouched? Okay, let's let's do this. I'm not there. Oh, that chicken. Oh, <laughs> I'm not sure where he went. Go 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 go! <laughs> okay, okay. I think they're okay. both dead. <laughs> I think they're both dead. Okay. okay. I'm still here. All right, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Okay. 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 I'm not dead. I'm not dead. Okay. We gotta find three more. Three more. Cool. All right. We gotta go down back to spawn and then take another turn. All right, you get that camera ready, bro. <laughs> oh, shoot it! Camera, camera. Go, 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 go. Oh, frick. Oh. No! Okay. Okay, 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 I might be cooked. I might be cooked. I might be cooked. That is dead. That is Seno dead. dead. I might be. I'm not dead. Oh, oh yeah, 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 keep going. No! Oh. Oh. Trying to find out. Okay, yeah. I'll go with T this way. Oh, oh my god. I'm sure this will be a dead end. <laughs> Alright, good ONG. Good ONG, people. Pray. Oh, bad ONG! Bad ONG! <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think he's just <laughs> Please never spot. Please, yeah, go, yeah, crouch into the. Oh, he's a place. He's a placeholder. He doesn't do anything. She's, I guess. Oh, fuck. <laughs> no way, he's all get dead. <laughs> we all died. Wait, if you go upstairs. I'm still here. If you want to see the place, you saw the bird. All of our bodies are there. <laughs> oh, he's gonna clutch. He's gonna clutch. He's gonna clutch. <laughs> Hold on, before this video ends, we now have channel memberships. You'll get early access to videos, shoutouts, badges, and emojis are still working in progress, but they will be there soon. Uh, goodbye.